Welcome everyone. Let's talk about sepsis. What is sepsis? Sepsis is a life-threatening condition that results when the body's response to an infection injures its own tissues and organs. Sepsis, if not treated, leads to shock, multi-organ failure, and death especially if not recognized early and treated promptly. It remains the primary cause of death from infection despite advances in modern medicine, including vaccines, antibiotics, and acute care. Let's have some definitions. First, what's infection? Infection is defined as inflammatory response due to presence of microorganisms, whether bacteria, virus, fungi, parasites, or prions, in a tissue which is normally sterile. What is systemic inflammatory response syndrome? It is a systemic response, the all body responses, systemic response to a variety of clinical insults. It might be these insults, infection, trauma, burns, pancreatitis, surgery. So not only infection causes serious, also other things like also massive blood transfusion. So the diagnostic criteria for serous composed of two or more of them. So presence of two of these clinical features, temperature more than 38 or less than 36, heart rate more than 90 beat per minute, respiratory more than 20 breaths per minute, white cell count less than 4,000 or more than 12,000. Presence of two of these features indicates that there is systemic inflammatory response syndrome. What is sepsis? Sepsis is when there is systemic inflammatory response syndrome plus an infection. So when there is two criteria of the serous plus an evidence of infection, it means that the patient is having sepsis. What is severe sepsis? Severe sepsis when there is sepsis and also an organ dysfunction. These organ dysfunctions could be respiratory, heart, renal, liver. So this is due to tissue hypoperfusion. So failure of one or more organ plus sepsis indicates severe sepsis. What is septic shock? Septic shock means that the patient is having shock Despite initial fluid challenge, so you have infused the patient with 500, then 1,000, then become 1,500 mil. Despite that, the patient still remain in shock. It means that the pathology was not hypovolemia. It was something due to uh, sepsis. Of course, sepsis affects the body by various mechanisms, like increase in vascular permeability. Also, myocardial dysfunction due to release of the some mediators, it depresses the myocardium. Uh, DIC, disseminated intravascular coagulation, and also impaired oxygen delivery to tissues. So there is a spectrum of clinical features uh, for sepsis, different from severity, from minor localized infection with no systemic symptoms through the failure of multiple organ, organs systems. Once serous has been identified, a potential infective cause must be searched for. The diagnosis of infection cannot be uh, delayed until an organism is identified because you have to start treatment unnecessary and delay in the treatment will lead to dangerous uh, complications. So at in initially, the infection must be suspected on the clinical features alone. For example, if you are suspecting a pneumonia, you don't need to send for uh, sputum culture and chest x-ray before starting antibiotics. You have to start antibiotics and things like that. Then uh, you search for the exact diagnosis. What are the commonest sites of infection? The commonest site actually is respiratory, uh, mostly pneumonia. It accounts for about 50 to 70% of severe cases of sepsis. The patient is recognized by having productive cough, shortness of breath, focal signs of uh, uh, respiratory examination, like cryptation, 
chest x-ray may show pneumonia in suspect if suspicion is clinically uh, and uh, as we said chest x-ray should not delay the treatment of sepsis abdominal infections are the second most common one like appendicitis diverticulitis perforated viscous ischemic bowel it accounts of about 20 to 25 percent of cases of sepsis the patient usually having abdominal pain distension diarrhea or other things Urinary tract infection account for 7 to 10% of cases of sepsis. Patient will have dysuria, offensive urine. Then they may have also loin pain, hematuria. So ideally, a sample of urine should be obtained prior to antibiotic therapy. Uh, positive dipstick result may confirm the source of infection, but uh, for culture, you may delay. Uh, you may not delay the uh, start of treatment. Soft tissue and bone joint infections also account for less than 10% of cases like uh, example cellulitis, septic arthritis, fasciitis, wound infections. So the patient will have clinical symptoms of uh, inflammation like redness, heat, pain, swelling and pus on aspiration of a collection or a joint. Uh, other common sites of um, infection, example, device related, like if a patient having a vascular catheter like CV line or urinary catheter for a prolonged period. Also assess, so how you have to assess the patients for indwelling medical devices and consider uh, removal or replacement. Other infections like meningitis or endocarditis having their clinical feature, for example, in meningitis the patient may have headache, neck stiffness, numbrachic petechial rash, endocarditis, the patient may have history of valvular heart disease, prosthetic valve, they may be present with fever, new, new murmur, also uh, some immunological phenomena. So the surviving sepsis campaign developed two bundles which are packages for treatment of severe sepsis. These are resuscitation bundle and management bundle. The resuscitation bundle should be done in the first six hours of recognition of sepsis, while the management bundle should be done within the 24 hours of infection. So what we mean by management bundle? You have to measure the serum lactate doing culture prior to antibiotic. As we say, uh, we, the broad spectrum antibiotic should be given within the first hour of recognition of severe sepsis. So if you suspected that, the blood culture delays your uh, treatment. You have to start with antibiotic as soon as possible. Which antibiotic you selected? We will come through that in uh, later slides. Treat hypotension or if the serum lactate more than four with fluids. So treat that with fluids. Deliver, of, um, deliver an initial of 20 ml per kg of crystalloid or equivalent. If the patient not responding with, with, with fluid, you add vasopressors, especially noradrenaline. In the event of persistent hypotension despite resuscitation, you have to uh, uh, maintain adequate central venous pressure more than eight. So the, this, the management bundle should be completed within the 24 hours. Uh, other thing is to consider, you may give a low-dose steroid. For patients who are in septic shock, uh, which is refractory to fluid and even the vasopressor. So you gave normal saline, also you started noradrenaline. Despite that the patient is in shock, you may give low-dose steroid. You may consider active protein C, uh, which is usually not available um, uh, to patients who are at high risk unless there are contraindications. Consider insulin therapy to control blood glucose if the patient is having hyperglycemia. Uh, and prevent excessive inspiratory pressures in mechanically ventilated patients because it might lead to pulmonary edema. Because it is difficult for a non-specialist to complete all these tasks within time and um, need a specific uh, knowledge and also at, and uh, skill. That's why United Kingdom uh, developed an educational resource approved by Surviving Sepsis Campaign. 
nationally and internationally, this education program has introduced a concept of sepsis sickness. This sepsis sickness should be completed by non-specialist staff within the first hour of uh, a patient with sepsis. So what are these sickness steps? It should be done in them. You have to take three things. You take uh, and give three things. You give oxygen. This is number one. Number two, you give an antibiotic. Number three, you have to give IV fluid. So give oxygen, IV fluid, and antibiotic. So these three things you have to give to the patient. What you take? You take urine output, monitor our, uh, our urine output, take blood cultures, and also check the serum lactate. If serum lactate more than two, it means there is sepsis. More than four, it means severe sepsis. So let's come to uh, what are the antibiotic regimes for uh, as an empirical regime before re results of culture return. Um, according to the side of infection, for example, in a patient with community acquired pneumonia, you have to give coamoxiclav three times daily, plus clarithromycin 500 mg twice daily, or if not available, azithromycin. If the patient is suspected to have aspiration pneumonia, you have to give flagyl or mitronidazole 500 mg three times daily, con uh, combined with coamoxiclav. If the patient have intra-abdominal sepsis, best one is piperacillin tazobactam, also called it tazosin, 4.5 gram three times daily IV, plus gentamicin 5 mg per kg IV, or sometimes 80 mg by two. For urinary tract infection, best one is gentamicin. If not available, or the patient having resistance, you may add piperacillin tazobactam. For soft tissue infection, best antibiotic is flucloxacillin to cover most of the staph aureus. It's given four times daily, two gram IV, plus benzyl penicillin, 1.2 gram, four times daily. If necrotizing fasciitis is suspected, you give a tazosin. For bacterial meningitis, give two grams of safety reaction. If the patient is having an age of more than 55 or immunocompromised, uh, you also add ampicillin 2 gram IV uh, to cover list listeria. For endocarditis, comoxiclav and gentamicin. For neutropenic sepsis, what we mean by neutropenic sepsis? Neutropenic sepsis, especially patients who are on chemotherapy or immunocompromised, they have a temperature of more than 38 degrees centigrade or any symptoms and signs consistent with sepsis. In abscesses, when you do complete blood count, you see that a neutrophil, uh, neutrophil count is uh, 0.5, uh, 0 0.5 multiplied by 10.9 liter or lower. So their neutrophil count is very low so in this patient is on chemotherapy and having uh, sinus symptoms of sepsis plus uh, this low neutrophil or low white BC, you have to give piperacillin tazobactam. Piperacillin tazobactam. No need to give gentamicin unless if it is indicated by culture. So only you give piperacillin tazobactam 4.5 gram three times daily. If the sepsis is unknown, you may combine piperacillin tazobactam plus minus gentamicin plus minus Take up lining accordingly. And thank you.